Okay, 2003 Chevy Impala with a 3.4 liter engine. And I shot a video on one of these previously on a plug exhaust. And, and my intent with this video is to do the same thing. We're gonna do some uh, plugged exhaust testing. But what I wanna do for this one is to show you guys what a good one looks like, you know? Uh, it helps to see a plugged one, but you definitely wanna see what a good one looks like. So I'm gonna show this one. We're not gonna go through all the drivability diagnostics to identify the plugged exhaust. Of course, it's gonna be, you know, take the car for a test drive while you're watching the scan tool, punch it to the floor, car doesn't go over 30 miles an hour. This is exactly like the other video I shot. And we wanna watch our O2. Our O2 is fixed rich, over 800 millivolts on this car, told us it wasn't a fuel starvation problem. And so what, we're gonna, what we did bringing it back here is we immediately put a back pressure gauge where the O2 sensor uh, goes and we'll get some readings on this and see what it looks like. So um, I guess I can show you real quick where this, uh, this gauge is connected. All right, so we're back on the firewall side and uh, the back exhaust manifold right there. We've removed the oxygen sensor and we've installed our back pressure tool. All right, so we're looking at our gauge before we start the car so you guys know what we're looking at. We're looking at the outer numbers. Um, our inner numbers are kilopascals and our outer one is pressure. So there's zero, one, and two. Two is our maximum number <clears throat> that we want to see at 3,000 RPM, no loads in park. And on a good car, we should be hovering very, very near zero. And we're gonna show you a good car next. So go ahead and start this thing. And at idle, we shouldn't have any. You're gonna notice this thing's gonna jump up to about a half a pound of pre uh, pressure at idle. So you can see just with the car idling, we got a half a PSI, just under a half. And I'm gonna hold it at roughly 3,000. I mean, I don't have a tachometer connected to this. Is there a tack on the dash? Yeah. You wanna uh, tell me when I'm at three grand? Just give me a no tack. Okay, well, just go by ear. We're gonna listen to the engine. That's probably about two grand there. guess on three grand might be a little higher than three you see we're sitting at four pounds of back pressure no question about it that is a plugged exhaust um, there's no reason when you do back pressure testing to snap it you know we don't have to do that because even on a good car you're gonna have pressure increases above two pounds um, we can get a couple of uh, comparisons on the good car compared to this one you know, that buried the needle. That was way over here. The needle goes up to uh, eight pounds of pressure is the most. And it just about went all the way around. That's not what you need to do. It is steady throttle, three grand, no more than two PSI. We'll compare this to a known good car next. All right, here. All right, here's our uh, comparison car. This is a 2007 uh, G6 GTP with a, what engine? 3.6 .6 liter engine. And uh, what we've done is we've taken the O2 out. Again, it's upstream O2. I'll get you a shot of that, where that's at. All right, just to give you some perspective of where we are. This is the engine, front exhaust manifold. And uh, we removed the O2 and installed our adapter where the upstream O2 lives. All right, go ahead and start the car. And you can see at idle, we don't have any back pressure whatsoever, which is normal to not have any at idle. Hold it at 3,000 steady. So steady three grand, you see we never moved off the zero. All right, let it idle. Just so you can see that we are in fact in this exhaust. You gotta do, do a snap throttle. Let it idle back down. Do it again. One more time. All right, looks good. So known good, known bad cars, back pressure tech. 
you can understand the spec now no more than two psi even two psi would be too high and uh that's it exhaust back pressure test all right, I've, I've decided to add a little bit more to this back pressure video because uh, I wanna show there's other ways to do it um, other than using the oxygen sensor location. Now, the upstream O2 isn't too bad to get to on this, although it is at a weird angle and would be a little bit more difficult. But there are some cars that accessing the upstream O2 is next to impossible. Not to mention they're usually rusted into the exhaust and whatever. So, the nice thing about Fords is Fords, Fords use pressure sensors for their EGR system for flow monitoring. I've shot a couple videos on EGR flow where they're using a sensor called a DPFE sensor. It's delta pressure feedback. And uh, what we can do is, is we can use that sensor for an, uh, for an exhaust back pressure te test. And on this car, it's very easy to get to. This is a 2000 Ford Focus. And this DPFE sensor is right here on the firewall. And, and what it looks like it has is it looks like it has two vacuum hoses going to it. Those are not vacuum hoses. Those are exhaust back pressure hoses. So those go down to an exhaust pipe and there's actually exhaust gas on those two hoses. And what you can do is you can adapt just a simple vacuum pressure gauge into either one of the hoses. And it doesn't matter which one, they both go down to an exhaust pipe. Um, I generally choose the smaller hose because it fits the fittings on my vacuum gauge a little bit better. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that hose off on the DPFE. Oh, oh. I just ripped your, your hose for your sensor. That sucks. Dude, I just barely touched it. Sorry, I'll fix it for you, I promise. Well, uh, I am filming too. <laughs> so, little editing maybe needed here. Yeah, you see, um, the bad part, I guess, about doing this one is the hoses can be brittle and, and you can see what happens. Um, I'll have to fix that when I'm done. No big deal, but this is exhaust gas right here. And so what I'm gonna use, can you see this in the video? Is that in there? Yep. Okay. I'm just using an old school vacuum gauge and it has vacuum on this, am I good? It has vacuum this way, it has pressure this way. Um, it's not calibrated very well. Um, it's kind of sitting on zero, but just pick a point as your zero point. I'm gonna adapt this to this exhaust back pressure hose for the DPFE. All right, so I've, I've removed this smaller hose from the DPFE sensor and I've adapted it to a simple old school vacuum pressure gauge and uh, I'm, I'm actually monitoring exhaust back pressure using this hose and the same thing just rev the engine but the thing about this one you got to remember is the EGR valve may open if the EGR valve opens this is going to go into a vacuum Let's, I'll show you that real quick the gauge go into a vacuum that EGR valve open for that so what I want to do is reach down and unplug the EGR to keep it from keep it from turning on or, or I'll unplug the EVR solenoid now that EGR valve is not going to open uh, this isn't always necessary but if you see it go into a vacuum that's what's happening same test though hold it at three grand And you see on that gauge, it barely came off a zero. That's completely normal. Do a couple snap throttle tests. Maybe hit two on a snap, try it again. And there was three on a snap. And again, the only reason I'm showing the snap is that's really not part of the back pressure test. It is steady throttle at three grand in park, no more than two PSI. And I've just shown you two known good cars and they were both sitting pretty much on zero. I wanted to show the Ford to show an alternate location of where you can do a back pressure test. Hey, okay, last last comment on EGR, or I'm sorry, yeah. Last comment on exhaust back pressure testing is if you can't get to the upstream O2, or you can't remove it, and the car doesn't have a pressure sensor for the EGR, 
um, you can take the EGR valve off and you can adapt your pressure gauge right where the EGR valve sits. There would be two ports. You'd have an intake port, you'd have an exhaust port, and you can adapt your gauge to it. Generally, generally what I'll do, I'll pull the valve off and I'll just hold a larger diameter adapter over the exhaust port. I'll put a piece of cardboard or something over the intake port to plug the vacuum leak and then I'll do my back pressure check. Better than fighting the O2 if you can't get it out. And then there's some cars that have uh, devices known as a EGR back pressure transducer and uh, I can show you one of those. And this is off of a different car, this is off of an old school Chrysler. And the, the design with this is, you know, as part of the EGR valve, is you have a transducer, that's this device right here, um, should look familiar to a lot of you. It's a solenoid and a transducer. And this hose that runs on the bottom of it is actually an exhaust passage. It actually sits underneath the pintle on the EGR valve. So there's exhaust gas that goes into this all the time. If you have one of these, you can just pop this off and put your pressure gauge slash vacuum gauge right here on this port and you can measure your exhaust back pressure right here at the EGR valve. So a couple different locations, back pressure transducers, remove the EGR, uh, four DPFE sensors, and of course the oxygen sensor um, this is all in my book, I think in section one on exhaust back pressure testing. You can find it in there too on this procedure, but those are all the methods I use for back pressure testing.